Hello and welcome to the Sony Pro Show, coming to you from the Sony Technology Centre at Pinewood Studios, England. My name's Hersha Patel and in this series, myself and a team of expert panellists will be assisting you in getting the very best out of Sony's incredible range of large format sensor cameras. So whether you're a hardened broadcast professional looking to upgrade your kit or an emerging self-shooter wanting to refine your workflow, this show has something for everyone. So please do subscribe to keep up to date. And as promised, our team of expert panellists today are Stefan Knight and Toby Lockerbie. Big Hello. round of applause from me. <laughs> Woo! Welcome, guys. How are you doing? Yeah, very good. Thank you. Yeah? Very well, thank you. Yeah. yeah. So, have you guys met before? Uh, no, we haven't met today. For the benefit of the viewers at home, can you introduce yourselves and talk a bit about your backgrounds and what your setups are when it comes to filming? Yeah, so uh, my name is Toby Lockerbie. I'm a filmmaker and director of photography, and I occasionally take stills as well. Uh, I have been doing that for about eight years, and um, what do I do? I sort of film all, sort of, all sorts of different kind of things, different kinds of equipment. I film music videos, I film uh, events, um, travel filming, any kind of sort of commercial shoot. Uh, what's, what's been one of your most um, memorable, memorable jobs? Uh, I was in Indonesia last year, last yeah. summer, for, oh, nice. for a week or so, just like flying every day to different islands to yeah. film different things for a, for a travel company. That's the dream job. It was, it felt like that. <laughs> Although I got heat stroke. And oh, that's it, not the dream. It was kind of tough in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. OK, what about yourself, Stefan? Well, hello. My name is Stefan hello. Knight. Uh, I'm a camera operator and gimbal operator uh, based in London. Uh, yeah. I've been shooting for around seven years. I studied media production in uh, Leicester. Majority of the work I do is based around music festivals yeah. and live broadcasting events for like Channel 4, Red Bull, BBC. So lots of run and gun Lots of run and gun stuff. Yeah, yeah majority of my work is based around being a gimbal operator. Yeah. Because uh, I work with many directors that want that floaty feeling. Yeah, and they, lots of And it's, it is like, like yourself, it's like run and gun style, but they just want the camera to go in different positions. They want a jib movement, they want a slider movement, and I think the gimbal is the, it's the most flexible like device that can do that, paired yeah. with the FS5 uh, or the FS7 or any of the Sony cameras. First Sony camera I started with was the mirrorless NEX5N, this tiny little oh, mirrorless sorry, camera, yeah. which uh, had an e-mount which allowed me to put other lenses as well as Sony. And yeah. then I upgraded to the FS700, which was like my workhorse the one, of a camera, yeah. yeah. And that unlocked the ability to shoot like slow-mo and things like that, which loads of directors love the, the way that, you know, the human eye can't recreate slow motion. So when you shoot it and you show them, you play, play the back yeah. to them, they just love it. So they're just like, yeah, give me more slow-mo. And yeah, and now recently I've upgraded to the FS5, yeah. uh, which I use in conjunction with a external uh, recorder, uh, which allows, yeah. to get, gives me boost it. Boost a more dynamic yeah. range and allows to shoot in ProRes as well, which loads of editors enjoy. Cool, OK. Yeah, that's me. Well, you passed my test of being expert, <laughs> so let's move on. The large format sensor. Mm -hmm. What is a large format sensor camera? Uh, well, a large format sensor camera is basically any camera that has a large sensor. Right. Um, originally, well, back a few years ago, sort of 10 years ago, mm -hmm. all sort of video cameras, digital video cameras, had yeah. a very small sensor, like very small. And that means everything's in focus. And um, sometimes you want everything in focus, but as a sort of director or cinematographer, you uh, more sometimes... Control. They want to have more control yeah, you, over the You, you, you want to have yeah. more control. Anything that... If you watch any sort of high-end TV show or advert or, or film, mm -hmm. they will often use a shallow depth of field at times, Which maybe Which is not like all the time. a filmic look, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's yeah. one of those looks that people associate with filmic yeah. and high-end and high-budget. Yeah. And so you can only really get that with a large sensor. Yeah. And so large format sensor cameras are sensors with... Uh, well, cameras with large sensors. And uh, it sort of started with stills cameras, and then uh, manufacturers started putting that sort of large, those sort of large sensors into more video Prosumer cameras. cameras. Like yeah. Yeah. Prosumer here, yeah. cameras that sort of have better audio, longer battery life, filters, buttons on the sides where you want buttons, yeah. uh, things like that. Because there was a point where the DSLR cameras could film yeah. Beautiful shots, but they weren't very practical. No, they were, as they were still filming they were, cameras. They were, they were still still cameras. Yes, <laughs> yeah, exactly. so yeah. they had the limitations. That was their main feature. Their main yeah. feature was that they were still cameras, yeah. and the sort of yeah. vi video aspect was kind of sort of tagged on the yeah. side. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they're still, you know, useful, and they're very small, mm -hmm. and you can Versatile. use them for, you know, they're, yeah, yeah they're, they're very good for that. Good but B cams. They, they don't have the kind of things that uh, people who 
make films for a living, yeah. Yeah. like sort of professional features, yeah. which are often very useful. And so if people was kind of making Frankenstein rigs with them with, you know, yeah. that was yeah. what, that was audio me. attachments. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. That is right. Because the image was so beautiful. And that's yeah, what's yeah, really, exactly. that's what's good about the more recent prosumer video cameras, yeah. because they still have that beautiful large sensor image, but they have sort of features which are also useful for sort of day-to-day -day regular filmmaking life. Yeah, yeah. And, and they're affordable as well. Yeah. 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 Well, and also they weren't broadcast worthy. You couldn't use a DSLR. Uh, Some places wouldn't, yeah. Take yeah, they the wouldn't allow it. Yes. It wasn't recorded to the right sort of codex and uh, things like that. And they yeah. kind of frowned upon it a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Great. So large format sensors, I'm in. Yeah, I'm win, in. Win. Sold. Good stuff. <laughs> yeah, sold. So hopefully now you understand what our large format sensor is. So let's move on to setting up a camera, namely the FS5. Look at this little baby. <laughs> so light! Yes, it is. Love it. Makes me want to film again. <laughs> Love the look of it. Um, so, Stefan, you use this a lot. Yes, I do. In the field. Yes, this I is do. your camera of choice. Oh. Take us Pass through you how <laughs> you set the camera up. OK, so when I'm shooting a festival and I'm roaming around, filming all the different tents, yeah. uh, first thing I do is I choose the resolution. So that's in the menu, menu here. Yeah. And I go to Rec Set. And depending, depending on the shot I'm doing, I change from XAV, XAVC quad, which essentially just shoots ultra HD, right. to XAVC HD, which shoots HD. That's XAVCL? No, just XAVC HD, which is okay. the normal HD. Oh, I do, okay. Sometimes yeah, I do shoot uh, XAVCL if I'm shooting uh, in HD, ultra HD, to get those wide shots. Yeah, okay. So, for example, if I'm shooting ultra HD, that allows me to punch into the image. Right. And if because I'm, you've got a bigger image. That's it. I've got like 3,000 pixels instead of yeah. 1080, yeah. 1920, 1080. And then I shoot different frame rates from 25 frames, 50, even to 100 frames. Yeah. Slow mo, which is amazing. Um, after that, I choose the color profile. I tend to shoot S Log 2, as all the other right. cameras there are also shooting on Sony's FS7, FS5, or even A7S's, and they cut very well between each other when you grade them together. Nice. Just very quickly, yeah. S, -Log, S Log 2 gives it a it gives a flat image, a flat yeah, it's image like a desaturated, then, yeah. uh, low contrast image which retains a lot of information, which you can then pick that up in the edit. Yeah, and yeah. everything can be graded the same. Graded the way, yeah, graded yeah. the same, which is very, very nice, cool. Nice, nice. Because the image and the viewfinder looks desaturated and yeah. low contrast, that makes it really hard to focus gonna, on things. Yeah. So um, there's a feature on here called Gamma Assist, yes. uh, which puts a Rec 709. That basically means it pumps up the contrast on the. Uh, on the image and the saturation, so you can actually focus and see what you're filming, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Um, but just to cut in, like, yeah. uh, not just for event things, but if, say, I was filming a music video or something like that, yeah. and I had the feed coming from this, or the director was looking at the monitor, yeah. having the gamma assist is really important, because if you right. show them the log image, it looks it's a bit confusing. Yeah. Yeah. Or they, they love the log image and they get stuck on that, and when yeah. you do the grade, they're like, why is it really <laughs> Yeah, saturated? what have you done with it? Yeah. 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 So yeah. it's yeah, it's a, it's a good feature to I be able to, to yeah. show people, as well as see yourself, yeah. what the what the sort of a more graded version yeah. would what it look could like. Look like. Yeah. 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 I, yeah, I like that, that, is that it. feature. Another feature that I love using on this little monitor, monitor is the peaking and right. zebras. So zebras just, uh, on, on, if you're exposing on a part of the image which is overexposed, you'll have like a zebra-like pattern on the image. Yeah. And that just that is just telling you that you need to expo yeah. you know, bring your exposure it's down a bit. It's going too high. It's going too high. Stop yes. it! Yes. But then, Unusable! But then as, you, as you're shooting S-Log2, you might have yeah. the information to bring that, the, those highlights down. Yeah. But you don't want to take that risk sometimes, yeah. so it's just knowing... Bit of a safety net That there. is it. Yeah, sometimes, I mean, you've got the gamma assist, but sometimes it's, it's still hard to judge exposure. Yeah. It's useful yeah. to have some exposure tools like Zebras to see when you're overexposing, and things like peaking to see when you're in focus. They're just very useful tools on professional cameras yeah. that you don't tend to get as much on, on sort of stills cameras. Yeah. Great. Nice one. So audio-wise, how mm -hmm. many channels? Uh, on, on the camera itself, there's two channels, so one on the body and one on the top handle here. But with this hot MI multi-interface hot shoe, that yeah, gives you an extra two channels. So this is a receiver here, which allows you to then have two transmitter lav mics. Yeah. And that's a total of four channels all from one little camera here. Amazing. Yeah, then, yeah. And monitor and listen to and record yeah. without no cables, which is awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's good if you've got multiple people mic'd up, or yeah. you've got lots of microphones going on. It. If you're at events and you're working with other people yeah. and you're, you know. Well, there's times I've actually, I do film many performance, uh, performers or DJs who are like a duo or there's four people DJing. Yeah. And I have to lab each one up and we don't have a soundie with us. 
I, you can do that. It's yeah. an option. So yeah. Well, that does cut cut out a bit of a cost if you can't afford to have a sound man. That is sometimes it, yes. you can't. Yes, you sometimes know. you can't. Ideally, you do want one. Ideally, you do because sound <laughs> sound is key. Like sound is way better. You know. We love sound. People. We love sound. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all about making the best sound possible, That's and this it. is this is a great feature. So you guys have been using the FS5 for a little bit now. What are some of your favourite features? Probably um, the slow motion is I'm really used to the FS700. That's been my workhorse for a yeah. few years. So this yeah. is kind yeah. of the, the step up from that, the yeah. next, next sort of camera up. Uh, and I use the slow motion quite a lot then. I sort of got slightly addicted to it, use it slightly too much. Yeah. It Maybe. is addictive. <laughs> when it first yeah. came yeah. out, it was like, oh, let's film everything in slow yeah. motion. Yeah. I literally yeah. did. And sometimes I still can't stop myself. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> I really like slow motion, and often clients really like slow motion. Yeah. So as much as people think it can think it can be quite faddish, clients do like slow motion. People who watch it things looks, that like slow motion. Yeah, yeah, it looks great. So yeah. <laughs> and if you watch adverts, you watch you know high end adverts, you will often Everything see slow just, motion. Yeah. 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 So it's a really good f uh, feature to have. My favourite sort of aspect of the slow motion, the S and Q mode, yeah. is the fact that you can. Um, you can shoot 240 frames a second, which yeah. is still which pretty. Is immense. Yeah, in H, so instead of in a, in a pretty good HD. So let's just see an example of S and Q motion in practice. You you can use a thing called end trigger. You can yeah. trigger the slow motion in different ways because it's about eight seconds, I think, mm -hmm. of slow yeah. motion, and because it's recorded into a buffer. What it can do is it constantly holds the information in the buffer, and when you press record, it records what's in the buffer. It goes back so, in time, yeah, essentially. Yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. like a sort of magic mode it where rewinds. you're watching something. If you're filming an event, you're looking for a really fleeting moment. You watch it, you wait for that sort of beautiful moment to happen, and then after it's happened, you press record, yeah. and it yeah, goes back in time yeah. and records it. I tend it. to use that feature a lot, uh, again, at festivals, when yeah. the end of the festival day or the night, and it's a, a fireworks. There was a fireworks moment oh, at right, the end. Yeah, yeah. I'm always waiting, I'm there and on trigger, moment. fireworks has happened. And press the yeah. press the record button, goes back in time. I've got the full fireworks scene yes. there perfectly. I'm not saying it actually goes back in time. <laughs> but it does go back in time. It, feels, it genuinely feels like it, it does it's feel magic. like sort of magic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's so useful because when you come to your edit, if you don't have that feature, you're constantly recording slow motion and you can, Filling get, up pick, your you can get so yeah. much footage yeah. like that. Yeah. And when you come to the edit, you've got to go through it all. And this way, it just like it's like pre-editing your footage yeah. you yeah. know, if you're yeah. shooting a lot of slow motion. So that's my sort of favorite feature. It always has been. Great and, feature. Uh, still absolutely love it. My other favorite feature is an electronic variable ND. Uh, this is this is exciting sounding. I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a pretty unique feature. It's only just become available on the FS5. And the FS7 Mark II and, just over yeah, here. Yeah, the FS7 Grab Mark II. I think one. these are the only two cameras that actually have this yep. this feature. Right. And it's super useful because a lot of high-end run and gun type cameras have ND filters built in. Yeah. And you can change between one ND filter and, and the next. But this is a sort of stepless ND filter. And if you're not sure what ND filters do, they sort of darken the image uh, so that you can decide creatively what your aperture will be. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, otherwise, you might have to stop your aperture down because it's too bright. Putting ND filters on the front reduce the amount of light coming in, so you can decide on what your aperture actually, what you actually want the aperture to be. Because this is variable and stepless, you can really sort of tailor it perfectly. So smooth and gradual. Yeah. Yeah. So and it's not like a big jump from exactly. no, no. a light you physically pair of see it in the image. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. Is yeah exactly. Completely gradual. Yeah. So it's uh, really good to maximize the amount of dynamic range you can get out. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the other aspect of it is you can do an auto ND feature, right. which is, for instance, if you're shooting on a gimbal yeah. or yeah. you're on a steady cam or something like that, and you're moving between rooms or moving from, say, a dark church outdoor into, a, outdoor, into yeah. a brightly lit outdoor, yeah. mm -hmm. your, the light changes drastically and you want to engage all these NDs, but you'll see them drop in. Yeah. And there's yeah. no easy and way to do it. And that loses that. Bit yeah, of the image, you, then. you can't do a sort of seamless into out yeah. type sort of shot, but with auto ND, it just automatically does it, it sort of fades into out, and Gradually, so it's a, yeah. it's a really clever feature That's for, really for run nice. and gun people who yeah. are filming in circumstances they can't control the lighting. Yeah, one of my favorite features uh, of the FS7 and the FS5, right, is this uh, quick release hand grip, which allows you by pressing this button, it allows you to rotate in loads of different ways, which then. It makes it very versatile. So if I just show you, if I also rotate this guy over here, and then probably lock that in, and then I get this hand grip. My bad. Ooh, there we go. Oh, so like if I get that hand grip, there you go. I'm in shoulder mounted mode right now. Yeah. So that allows me to shoot it from the shoulder. And then you can control from that. And I can that just angle hand grip. the monitor down like this. 
or I can shoot from the hip if I really wanted to, and then I can say, and then or say I wanted to. <laughs> I've seen loads of operators, uh, again, that are not very tall, and they're shooting over a crowd. They've done this, and then they've popped it like on their head like that. Whoa. I've seen people <laughs> do that when they're not very tall. Yeah, um, and it just makes it very versatile. Let's move on to lenses. Sony, the Sony camera range is E mount. Yes. Yeah. So, which gives you a, a huge option when it comes to lenses. Very flexible. Yeah, for you guys, how does that work in practice? It's a really super flexible mount because yeah. uh, the mount is right next to the sensor, which means you can use lots of different kinds of adapters mm -hmm. and use uh, different lenses. Yeah. Some not made by Sony, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, but it's fine. It's what I'm thinking about there more is uh, cinema lenses, for instance. Yeah. You can put yeah. a PL mount on it and you can put cinema lenses on. Mm -hmm. Or you can use old legacy stills yeah. lenses. Because you want lenses. It, yeah, you want to give a sort of old... Exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, and so it's super flexible and you yeah. can use different kinds of adapters. And you also have a large range of Sony lenses as well, yeah. like the sort of G series here. Yeah, which, which takes advantage of the uh, like the servo zoom and the autofocus features and things like that. Yeah. So for your event work, you probably use. Yeah. The... So when I do like live multicam stuff um, yeah. on, on the gimbal, I have the Sony G eighteen to one five servo, and then I just have a little um, hand grip uh, servo controller, which allows me to record trigger and also zoom in and out all the way from eighteen, which is very wide. Yeah. All the way up to one hundred and five mil, which is nice and tight. Wow. Oh, while I'm still while massive. I'm still moving left to right like a really? dolly, and then I take advantage of the autofocus on the FS5 to track the person because it has face tracking as well. Right. So that's how I use my lenses alongside using it with third-party adapters as well. So what's quite amazing is you know if you're shooting events yeah. and you're shooting on an electronically stabilized rig and you're shooting sort of autofocus, you've mm -hmm. got like zoom, all those sort of functions. Mm -hmm. It's all kind of all to give like a really cinematic look mm. and there's just so much crossover between that and any other kind of you know commercial corporate shoot anything that sort of increases the abilities of, of like value. one man bands or like very small productions mm. to be able to do sort of more cinematic productions yeah. is super helpful so all right so i think it's about time you guys went out and filmed something enough of this camera chat <laughs> <laughs> we've run out of time thank you very much for joining me thank see you, you again next Pleasure. time so i hope you guys have enjoyed the show and gained some valuable insight into these cameras particularly the fs5 in the next episode we'll be talking about sony's exciting new hybrid log gamma firmware update and what they're calling instant hdr see you guys soon and don't forget to subscribe